In this video from Learn Electrics, we will explain some of the fault messages that a patch test instrument might display. This came about because we had a recent request concerning patch testing, a request for a little help in understanding what the fault messages were indicating. What sort of problems can we get when patch testing? And how does the test meter show this? The question was posed by the owner of a Seaward Prime Test 100 and, just by luck, I have one of these in my box of test meters. The Prime Test 100 performs all the basic functions that are needed and although there are other testers on the market by different manufacturers, they all follow a similar methodology. This video will help you with understanding the basics of many meters. Of course, there are test instruments out there with much more advanced features, with equipment ID registers, with barcode readers and label printers, but those functions are not part of this video. Watching this video and practicing as often as you can with your own test meter will always improve your understanding and skills. Pad testing should be called in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment but many electricians and customers still refer to the more common name. The current code of practice is the 5th edition and this should be your go-to reference book for data and information. The code of practice aligns with the 18th edition of the wiring regulations BS 7671 and with the electricity at work regulations. If you comply with the code of practice you will almost certainly comply with the regulations. There are two inspection modes to in-service inspection and testing. A formal visual inspection, which is just that, visual, just having a good look at the equipment to check for problems. And there is the combined inspection and test, which is a visual inspection followed by testing with a suitable test instrument. Visual inspections cannot and should not replace combined inspection and testing, but they can be used as safety checks in between tests, especially where the work conditions are arduous or prolonged. An intermediate visual check will act as an additional safety check. There are several classes of electrical equipment. The two most common are Class 1 equipment and Class 2, plus testing of mains cords and extension cables, and these are the three areas that this video will cover. Class 1 equipment must have an earth and the connection between the earth conductor and the exposed conductive part of the equipment must be tested. After an acceptable visual inspection the following tests will be carried out automatically by the test instrument. The resistance of the protective earth to the exposed parts measured in ohms the insulation resistance between the live conductors and earth, measured in millions of ohms or megohms, and the leakage current or protective conductor current between the appliance and the earth. And then, a functional test should be carried out by the inspector. Class 2 equipment does not have an earth, but we should still test with the earth probe to any exposed conductive parts since, if damaged, or incorrectly installed, they may introduce an earth potential, as we shall see. The following tests will be conducted by the test meter. Continuity to exposed metalwork. Insulation resistance between the live conductors and exposed metalwork or other areas of concern. And a touch current test between exposed metallic parts and the live conductors. Followed by a functional test from the inspector. The mains cord is not strictly a class of equipment, but we treat it here as one of the essential tests. Several tests will be carried out automatically by the test instrument, including the resistance of the protective earth measured in ohms, the insulation resistance between the live conductors and the earth measured in megohms, and also the continuity of wiring, checking for shorts, and the polarity of the wiring. The inspector should always check the plug for damage, for soundness of connections and to confirm that the fuse rating is appropriate for the intended use. Let's look at Class 1 equipment. 
The equipment must be earthed when in use and the earth symbol as displayed here is often shown on the equipment. The test instrument is supplied with a clip-on earth probe to attach to the exposed conductive parts. This is essential to prove the correct and adequate earthing of exposed metallic parts. If the earth probe is not attached, the tester will not proceed with the tests. This would be the normal setup for testing a piece of Class 1 equipment. EUT is shorthand for Equipment Under Test. The mains cord for the equipment is connected to the equipment and the plug from the cord is inserted into the tester. From the tester, the earth probe is attached to the metallic part of the equipment, thus completing the circuit ready for testing. With the equipment switch closed, in the ON position, the appropriate button can be pressed to start the test. If all is good, after a few seconds, a pass message will be displayed on the meter along with the test results. The test results should now be recorded on the PAT test record sheet. The meter display should look something like this. We can now look at some fault messages. What is likely to be displayed? What causes it? And how should we react? This is not a definitive list of fault messages, nor is it a list of all the problems that can cause the messages to be displayed. Let's start with the message low load. If the equipment switch is left in the open position, not switched on, a low load message will be displayed. The tester cannot find a return path through the line conductor, through the load and back along the neutral wire. Simply switch the equipment on. The same message would be displayed if the fuse had blown inside the plug, but this time the low load message will still be displayed even after switching the equipment on. The message RPE fail can be displayed. RPE is the resistance of the protective earth conductors. It could be something as simple as forgetting to attach the earth probe when moving from one piece of equipment to another. And shown here is a typical test meter display. If everything is attached as required, the problem could be a damaged or loose earth connection. It could even be that the metalwork is not an exposed conductive part. It could be a piece of decorative metal that is bonded onto a plastic surface without any earth connection. So try another metallic location. Class 2 equipment does not require an earth. The nature of its construction means that any electrical problem on the inside cannot get to the outside. Often called double insulated, the symbol is shown here. Look for this symbol on equipment. It will give you a clue to the class, but occasionally you will find it missing. This could be because of the age of the equipment, or even because the lettering has worn off the rating sticker with continued use. Class 2 has a double insulated casing, and in theory, the earth probe is not required since there is no earth. A typical pass will look something like this. Notice that the RPE test does not have any test results because there is no earth. As before, a low load fault message may be displayed. If the equipment switch has been left in the open or off position, the meter will detect this. The solution? Close the switch. Some modern tools, industrial drills, etc. have electronic starters and they will show a high impedance to the tester even though the switch is in the on position. In this case, press the class 2 start test button again and the meter will continue with the rest of the tests. Shown here is a typical meter display for low load. We should use the earth probe with class 2 equipment for several reasons. There may be a metallic handle attached. Think of your average electric lawnmower. This is class 2 with metal handles and a metal blade. A class 2 electric drill has a metal chuck, but this is electrically separated from the motor by a plastic linkage that keeps the metal motor and the metal chuck apart from each other. Now we need to use the earth probe. And a typical pass will look like this. If we have a flashing earth symbol shown, what does this mean? By attaching the earth probe to the metalwork on the class 2 equipment, 
that Chester has found a path to Earth. This can be by someone modifying the equipment and compromising the Class 2 protection. Perhaps they've removed the handles and now there is a hole in the equipment that allows dirt and debris to accumulate inside the hole. This could be conductive or damp and the meter has found an earth path through it. Or it could be damage to the casing, allowing debris to get inside. The test will be stopped and the earth symbol will begin to flash. Moving on to mains cords now. There is a lot more to mains cord and extension lead testing than you would at first imagine. Mains cords form a loop with the tester. Ensure that both ends are connected to the tester. Extension leads can also be tested as cords and most testers will have a plug and socket adapter to allow the extension lead to form a loop with the test meter, the red lead shown here. Test results may need to be reassessed to allow for the length of the extension leads as long leads may increase the resistance values quite significantly. When we carry out a mains cord test, the test meter will test the earth conductor for an acceptable resistance value, check the continuity of the conductors, carry out an insulation resistance test between the conductors, check for shorts between conductors and confirm the correct polarity. A good test, a pass, will be displayed as here and these results should be recorded. If the false message short is displayed, what is this telling us? The tester has found a path between the line and neutral conductors. The first thing to check might be to look for any obvious damage to the cord. Or is it a badly wired plug? This can often be the case where a plug has been fitted by someone that is not in the know about keeping the wiring inside the plug neat and tidy. The message cross can also be displayed. In this case, the test meter has detected an incorrect polarity. Line and neutral have been crossed over and the usual culprit is often a plug that has been incorrectly wired. The meter will display a message like this and we can easily solve this. Just pop the cover off the plug and check. And the fault message open, what is this telling us? Open can mean lots of things. All that the meter knows is that there is a break in the line and neutral path, no continuity. This could be a break in one of the line or neutral wires. Is the plug wired correctly? Does line go to line? Does neutral go to neutral? It could even be a blown fuse or even no fuse. Or it could even be self-inflicted if the mains cord is not plugged into the tester correctly. The test meter will display a message like this. If you have a different type of meter, the message may be slightly different, but it will still be easy to interpret as an open problem. And what about a fail message? If the test meter cannot detect an earth conductor or the resistance value is too high, then the test will be stopped. No further testing will be carried out and a fail message like this will be displayed. A little recap. Pat testing relies on a methodical approach. When inspecting or testing, always try to follow the same sequence and method. This then becomes a habit that goes a long way to ensuring that nothing is missed. And always carry out a visual inspection before moving on to the testing. Where equipment is in continual use or liable to be damaged by the nature of the work environment, a busy maintenance workshop for example, consider introducing an extra visual inspection in between the scheduled combined inspection and test. Remember that combined inspection and test must happen at predetermined intervals. We cannot rely solely on visual inspections. And please be aware that this video is intended to supplement a formal training course, not to replace it. As with all testing, practice is key to understanding and to becoming proficient. And we hope that you found this video useful and informative. In later videos, we will look in depth at the code of practice, how to use the book and how to carry out its requirements.
Thank you for watching. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.